What is going on guys, this is Biasin. So I really wanted to talk about the Cypher Monsters Gamma, Delta and Epsilon because they have been gaining a lot in popularity recently, I mean especially Gamma and Delta, uh, because of the fact that uh, people are running out of, you know, options for hand shops. There's not enough hand shops out there, there's only like 27 billion, uh, Tenpai Dragon is already main decking like 22, and uh, they can still, they, they still have the room for more by the way, in case you were wondering. Yes, it is ridiculous, Yu-Gi-Oh is kind of getting crazy. Uh, but Gamma, despite the fact that it's limited, people still want to hold uh, to it because honestly, I mean, I'm not gonna lie, if, if Gamma was a 3, it would have been the best card in Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, because the, 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 this card does too much, it's a Veiler and an Ogre at the same time, it negates and destroys and it's just a hand shop, it's not like a, a monster like a, something like this, you know, Baba de Fleur that can negate anything on the field, it makes sense, you have to commit to it, but Gamma you can use turn 0, so it's a little unfair they can do so much, but every single Cypher Monsters does have its own share of flaws. So in order to use Gamma, Delta or Epsilon, you have to control no monster and you also have to have driver either in the hand field or uh, deck uh, sorry you know what, what no hand graveyard and deck there you go uh, so if uh, the driver is banished then uh, you're screwed and if the driver is in your hand well congratulations you are basically just like me because the card is glued to your hand and it doesn't do anything it is basically a summon skull that you have to play in your deck it doesn't achieve anything other than making these cards live which is a little frustrating but otherwise again these cards would have all been banned because they would have all been <laughs> completely ridiculous if you could use them without having to play a really bad card so the ratio is usually what we're seeing one gamma one driver as well as two deltas in the side deck uh, but some people are also choosing to main deck the gamma and not play delta whatsoever or maybe side the deltas or maybe play three delta and gamma uh, we can always see epsilon every now and then sometimes i see it in the ocg and sometimes i see it a little bit in the tcg it's the more uh, niche one so obviously Gamma negates uh, and destroys the uh, monster effect whenever it activates this effect. A monster one yeah, there. <laughs> and then at, uh, Delta, it's uh, it's a really weird one. It negates only the activation of a spell card, not uh, like the um, spell card or effect. Uh, so if your opponent goes like activate barrier of the voice's voice, you have to negate that uh, and not like the effect to search. Uh, so if your opponent has another barrier, then you can still activate it again and then use uh, the effect to search. So that's a little frustrating. And then Epsilon, exact same thing. It only negates the activation of a trap card not a trap card or effect so if a trap card is already placed uh, face up on the field tries to use this effect again you cannot negate it with epsilon so again very relevant for the silent forcer deck in case they go for the authority the, the continuous trap card uh, you're not going to be able to do anything with the, your epsilon so yeah i like to compare delta to uh, magic jammer uh, negates the spell card activation and then i like to compare epsilon to seven tools of the bandit i mean th these two cards are classics everybody should know about them and another thing is that the Cypher Monsters can be negated by the lice of Ash and Ghost Bell since you are either trying to special summon the driver from the hand or the uh, deck or graveyard. But to be fair, uh, this actually works in your favor because your opponent is going neg one and your side frame stays in your hand so that you can use it again because these cards are in no way once per turn whatsoever. We can see sometimes the exact same gamma being used like multiple times in the same turn. It is kind of crazy, but there are some situations where the gamma just hits a, a little harder than some other spots. So you also have to know when to interrupt your opponent, otherwise this card can end up just being another Veiler and you don't want that, right? Or, or like an Ogre. Uh, again, Snake Eye Ash, for example, if you Gamma there, you're kind of just winning the game because if you were to Ash a Snake Eye Ash, it doesn't do enough. They can still use the other effect to transform it into an Oak or a Flamberge, so it doesn't uh, doesn't do too much. And if you go Bonfire, search a Snake Eye Ash, and then you get Drooled, you can Gamma that as well. And that's a little filthy because then you got a Gamma and a Driver on your own turn. There is nothing more disgusting than resolving a Cypher Monster while you play because then you can use these two monsters in order to Synchro Summon either an Omega or an actual Synchro Starter's Dragon, and then revive back the <laughs> Cypher Monster Tuner, and then make a balance, so that's, uh, that's a little stupid. And then Original Sinful Spell Snake Eye is a card that can, well, I mean, I might as well talk about it right now. Uh, it, it's a card that you can only use one effect per turn and only once that turn. So if you get its activation negated, it, it doesn't matter, you can't use another one. So it's actually a really good card to negate off of Delta. But if you were to get, uh, let's say if you activate Original Sinful Spell Snake Eye, you get Ashed, you can Gamma that, that's also insanely good. It's pretty much the same thing as getting Drooled on Bonfire and Resolving Gamma, just a little too good. Uh, Diabell Star, I mean, you can either Gamma that or you can discard the Driver with Diabell Star. That's a free way of discarding a card that just doesn't do anything. 
Uh, so that that's nice. I mean, I, I recommend, by the way, only playing the Cypher Monsters if you have, like, discard outlets, because if you got, like, you will draw a driver eventually. It's a one out of seven chance, so it's, it, it will happen, like, in a 50 game uh, event like in a Nats for example it's gonna happen maybe like seven times or something so you have to be uh, prepared for these uh, uh, situations and then uh, shifter uh, gamma is the only card that can negate that and finally diviner low and uh, sorry diviner and novox i don't even know why i'm calling it low it's just, i'd rather die than call uh, some new cards with their uh, new names i would say imperm is not really good against these cards because seravis can protect them ash doesn't do anything against novox but i guess it can be used against bearer but if they have the Sephira, then you lose anyways but gamma is probably the best thing that you can do at this point in order to stop them uh, they lose the effect and they lose the body which does matter uh, so yeah, Gamma obviously covers a lot of ground eh? in case you want to hurt your opponent or protect yourself. It pretty much just acts as another Cobb by the Grave or Cross Out in certain situations. I do remember Dragon Link players when they were going like Chaos Space, Discard, Absol Router, and then you're like, hmm, I either Ash that or I Drool on Resolution, and then I eat the Gamma anyways, and then my opponent goes Chaos Ruler and destroys me. Yeah, the not good old days. Anyways, now for the spell cards that uh, Delta can negate. For the most part, it's nothing too impressive because, again, I've already mentioned that Delta can only negate the activation of a spell card, not the uh, activate or effect. Uh, so, yeah, you're gonna have to use your Delta very early. You can't really hold it or anything. Uh, if you go Bonfire, remember that you can only activate one Bonfire per turn, not you can only use. So if you get the activation of Bonfire negated and you got a second one, then you can Bonfire again. And your opponent basically went Neg 1 with the Delta, which is a little uh, unfortunate. Uh, wanted, uh, this is a you can only use. So ironically, using Delta on Wanted is not that bad. But if people are playing 3 Diabellstar, 3 Wanted, sometimes the Wanted is really just a way to bait the opponent. So I don't think I would use my Delta for that. As a matter of fact, the best card to Delta by far is Original Sinful Spell Snake Eye. Because this one's actually a choke point. You can only use it once in the combo. And there's only one way of really doing this. Because Wanted, there's Wanted and Diabellstar, or there's Snake Eye Ash Bonfire. So there's technically 12 copies of wanted in a way kind of but original sinful spell snake eye it's really just you stop that and then you're basically cutting them off from either the farking engine or everything uh, actually quite devastating but against the pure snake eyes deck if they don't really care about original sinful spell snake eye at least you can still delta the divine temple it's not that great because they still have the snake eye uh, ash uh, one card combo that still ends on the flamberge ip and everything but at least you make them lose the divine temple which is really annoying it is the way they would play through uh, other hand traps and also just annoy you on your or on your turn by summoning monsters from the spell and trap zone boosting the attack of everything uh, placing the oak in the spell and trap zone that that also does a lot uh, one for one crazy card to negate it's not once per turn but it's at one so it's technically once per turn once per duel so yeah, negating that uh, is devastating because they also have to discard a monster or send a monster from the hand to the grave. And then, then you can also negate cards that would try to stop you with the Delta. So if you've got other hand shops, you can stop cross out, uh, triple tactic talent, call by the grave. And uh, again, some other cards like miscellaneous that everybody can play that you can negate. I mean, everybody does not play branded fusion, but some voices voice decks have been uh, incorporating that to their strategy and prosperity, uh, duality, and these cards, uh, these kinds of cards you can just negate generically. So that's nice. And now for the worst one out of the good cypher monsters that you can play is Epsilon. It only negates the activation of a trap card, like I said. Uh, so you can negate anti-spell and purely yip. That that's pretty good because these cards are typically flipped on your draw phase or standby phase. But Dimensional Bear and Summon Limit, they're usually flipped while you play the game. So you're typically going to control a monster on the field, and that's the reason why I'm really relict, uh, reluctant to playing Epsilon. I don't, I don't really think it fixes anything on its own, and it's also a one-trick pony, because once people know that you're on Epsilon, it's so easy to play around it. Like, purely players, they can just wait until you commit one card on the field, basically, well, one monster, and then they purely yeep you and you lose. Or Anti-Spell, again, I mean, same thing. They can just wait until you go main phase, do something. Well, to be fair, you can use a lot of spell cards first, but... You get what I'm saying, right? You can still interrupt your opponent, like, mid-main phase with anti-spell, safe from Epsilon, if you know that your opponent is on Epsilon, because at YCS's big events, etc., people will, uh, unfortunately, scout your uh, secret text, and maybe Konami will do it for uh, for them instead, 
uh, if uh, the card is like really interesting because Epsilon is not a card that I see every day, but Gamma and Delta are the really important ones. And again, Gamma can negate a lot of cards that the other hat shops can't really negate really well or can't negate whatsoever, such as Dimension Shifter. Uh, if you're going second, at least, if you're going first, there are a few ways you can either obviously call by the grave or cross out if you play your if you play uh, your own Shifter. But if you're going second, yeah, gotta pray that you draw the one of. And again, there's a 12.5% chance of that happening, which is roughly 1 out of 7, or I think it's exactly 1 out of 7. And going second, the odds of drawing a 1 of uh, rise to 15%. Uh, so I think that's a little more than 1 out of 7, except if I'm, my, my maths are incorrect, but 1 out of 6 point something. Uh, but yeah, that also applies to Driver. So there's the same likelihood of drawing Driver as there is of drawing Gamma. Uh, which is the one argument not to play these cards, I want to say. Even if it's already inconvenient that you can't use them while you control no monsters, that is something that is infinitely more manageable. Oh, and the final thing that I wanted to mention, these uh, monsters are all level 2 tuners, so you can all summon them with emergency teleport, so that's an uh, added bonus in case your deck was already playing that, and I can think of a lot of decks that would want to play emergency teleport. It is a pretty respectable card, so if you just need that level 2 tuner, at least you know where to go. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. So guys, in conclusion, consider the Cypher Monsters if your deck can discard stuff. Because worst case, you draw the driver, you don't really care too much. You can just discard it off of the Abel Star, for example. So it's a really nice addition to the far decks. Uh, maybe in Silent Forcer, it's a level 6 light monster. So you can kind of use it as a ritual material, but not really. It's not enough unless you're playing the bad Saphira ritual monster, which I don't recommend. Don't do that. That's pretty much it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Let me know your thoughts about the Cypher monsters, and I'll see you guys very soon. Peace.